Australia is a massive country. I don't need to tell you that. And with a big country comes the big road trip. Road trips are a quintessential part of any Aussie's life. You'd be hard pressed to find an Aussie who hasn't ventured out onto the road for hours and hours, driving endlessly out into the horizon. I honestly love going out on road trips. I've gone out on a lot of road trips with Amy, whether it be up the Castlereagh Highway to Mudgee, down the Princess Highway to Kayama, or out on the Great Western Highway to Katoomba. Recently, Amy and I were out on the Pacific Highway, which is the major highway linking Sydney to Brisbane. It's a beautiful highway used by millions every year. We used it to get to Brisbane, and might I say, Brisbane's amazing. I highly recommend a visit, Amy and I had so much fun there. The drive up to Brisbane, however, has changed a lot over the years. Right now, the highway is a four-lane divided carriageway, basically a freeway, for almost its entire length. But it wasn't always this way. Many years ago, twin tragedies struck in the same year that changed the Pacific Highway forever. The North Coast Highway was proclaimed a highway in 1928, before being renamed the Pacific Highway in 1931. That was 100 years ago, and let me tell you, the highway looked very different. For starters, the highway was far, far windier, and it wasn't even sealed for most of its length. As for rivers, well, bridges were costly to build, so vehicular ferries existed instead. Predictably, the road changed a lot over the decades that followed. Deviations were constructed, bridges were built, sections were sealed, and the drive slowly started to improve. Thanks to literally my favourite website ever, Ozroads, we have a brilliant time capsule into how the highway looked in the early 2000s. Massive credits to Sam from Ozroads for allowing me to use these photos. Looking at these photos, you can really appreciate that the Pacific Highway once looked less like a highway linking two of Australia's biggest cities, and more like the short drive you take to get to the local Woolies. Once upon a time, the Pacific Highway was a very different drive, constantly switching from 100 kilometers an hour to 50 kilometers an hour, meandering your way up mountains and down valleys slowing down as you entered the over 30 towns and villages dotted along the princes. Did I just say princes? Dotted along the Pacific Highway. From Grafton to Tari, Kempsey to Ballina, Ewingsdale to Tugan, Wulgulga to Yurunga. There was a plethora of delightful towns to explore. America's interstates may have provided freeway links between most big American cities since the 50s, but Sydney to Brisbane wasn't like this. Not long ago at all, the Pacific Highway was like Route 66 from the Pixar movie Cars. Those on the Pacific Highway had no choice but to enter most towns and briefly experience a new world. But as pleasant and meandering as this drive may have been, all good things come with a cost. The Pacific Highway was one of the most dangerous highways in Australia. I mean, what can you expect? This highway traverses some of the most complex terrain on Australia's east coast. So complex, in fact, that freight traffic between Sydney and Brisbane was instead advised back then to take the less windy New England Highway, even though this was a longer route. Despite this, the Pacific Highway was heavily trafficked, and it clearly did not have the capacity for this. The Pacific Highway had a very high fatality rate. But nothing could have prepared anyone for the twin tragedies that would strike in 1989. It was a tragedy unparalleled on Australian roads. Just before dawn, the heavily laden semi collided head-on with the coach on a straight stretch just north of Grafton. The impact sent the coach into a deadly tumble, rolling three times before coming to rest. Emergency crews worked for hours to free passengers still trapped, but the extent of the carnage quickly became shockingly apparent. 
On the 20th of October 1989, a semi-trailer travelling south on the Pacific Highway near Grafton veered onto the wrong side of the highway, colliding with a passenger coach. 21 people lost their lives, making it the worst bus accident in Australian history. And yet, in a twisted and improbable stroke of misfortune, that top spot was taken by another bus accident that not only also happened on the Pacific Highway, but happened only two months after the Grafton crash. This is the sickening sight rescuers arrived to find on the Pacific Highway at 3.30 this morning. Two buses locked together in a head-on collision. A mass of hopelessly tangled wreckage with surviving passengers trapped, bleeding and desperately crying out for help. On the 22nd of December 1989, a southbound passenger coach veered onto the wrong side of the Pacific Highway, colliding with another passenger coach. 35 people lost their lives. These were absolute tragedies, and my most sincere respects to those impacted by the accidents. 56 lives were lost on the highway in a matter of 8 weeks. These are the two most serious bus accidents to have ever happened in Australia. No other bus accidents come close to their fatality count, so it truly was an exceptional and tragic coincidence that they both happened weeks apart on the same highway. That said, it was far from just bad luck, but rather poor highway design. It was clear that something had to be done about the dangerous Pacific Highway. If you're travelling on the Pacific Highway these holidays, you'll notice many major road improvements are now open between Tweed Heads and Newcastle. The New South Wales and Commonwealth governments have committed $2.2 billion to a massive upgrade of the highway to help make your holidays safer, easier and closer. Clear recommendations were made following both crashes that the Pacific Highway be upgraded to a dual carriageway for its entire length, from Sydney to Brisbane. A dual carriageway is far safer than a two-lane road, also known as an undivided highway. Dual carriageways have two lanes in both directions, making overtaking substantially safer. But also, they have a wide median and are often grade separated, meaning instead of at-grade intersections, interchanges and bridges are used. Every town I listed earlier, Grafton, Taree, Kempsey, Ballina, Ewingsdale, Tugan, Wulgulga, Yurunga, those are all towns that the Pacific Highway once went through that are now bypassed by a dual carriageway. By the end of 2020, just over 30 years after the Pacific Highway bus disasters, 657 kilometres of the Pacific Highway had been successfully upgraded, with a cost of over $15 billion. 600 bridges were built, over 30 towns and villages bypassed, and 100,000 jobs generated. And man, is the difference incredible. Due to the upgrade, a staggering two and a half hours are saved on a journey from Sydney to Brisbane. The highway no longer goes into towns, but rather goes around them on bypasses. This was a faster highway, but more importantly, a significantly safer highway. Fatality rates have consistently fallen by 70% since the upgrades commenced in 1986. To appropriate Winston Churchill, never let a good tragedy go to waste. Those who tragically lost their lives on the highway did not die in vain. There's still a bit of the highway left to upgrade though. Hexham remains one of the most infuriating parts of the highway to drive on due to this stretch of the road filled with traffic lights and the poorly engineered Hexham bridge crossings. The Hexham Bypass opens in 2028. Transport for New South Wales has sneakily classed this as an M1 extension instead of a Pacific Highway upgrade. Probably so they can say their upgrade is done sooner, but don't let them fool you. There's also the Coffs Harbour Bypass left, which has already started construction and will open in 2027. But if people can't drive through Coffs Harbour, how will they see the absolutely massive big banana? Amy, where's, I can't see it. Where where's it? the big banana? It does, it's not big enough, I can't, yeah, find, it? I can't it? find it, it's not big enough. Is there something here like... The Pacific Highway really has changed so much over the years, and for the better. But there is one thing that has been lost. It's the joy of the drive. 
The Pacific Highway used to wind. It used to meander. It demanded your attention. No, it attracted your attention. And, well, the Pacific Highway now just doesn't. It's gone from a mesmerizing country highway that winds its way through charming country towns to a straight, flat, borderline freeway that's lost some of its magic. I don't know, there's something really fun about driving on an unbypassed road, seeing signs pointing to new and amazing attractions, stopping at every exciting thing you see on your drive, exploring new towns as you drive through them. I mean, hey, look how much fun these cars are having driving through Radiator Springs in the movie Cars. <laughs> that said, I don't think anyone should take the old highway over the new highway. This new highway is so much safer, and that's a massive win. And honestly, I think I'm just being a bit of a Debbie Downer. Amy loved the Pacific Highway Drive, even in its upgraded form, and she thought it was really scenic. I honestly could be in the minority here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. In the movie Cars, Radiator Springs is bypassed by Interstate 40, and the town is dead. It's a movie that urges us to consider what happens to a town when it's bypassed and forgotten. But it doesn't exactly mirror reality. Towns on the old highway don't seem to be struggling at all. In fact, quite the contrary. Towns such as Kempsey have beautified their CBDs. Their CBDs are no longer split into by a busy highway, and a town that does not have to deal with dirty motor traffic is a town that will attract people to it. After all, Amy and I didn't drive straight to Brisbane and back, as the movie cars may have you think. We stopped in Taree, Port Macquarie, McLean, Nambucca Heads, Coffs Harbour, Brunswick Heads, Merwillumba, and Tweed Heads. Ah, the Pacific Highway. It has changed so much from its days as a narrow dirt track. Next time you're driving up to Coffs, or to Byron, or to the Gold Coast, or wherever you're headed, just remember the rich history of the highway that you're on.